Hi everyone, Cassie here from Primrose Dawn, and today I'm going to show you how to sew Style A of the Dahlia Hipster. Before we begin sewing, I wanted to talk a little bit about cutting out the pieces from the stretch lace trim. Each of the pieces that's cut from the lace has a marking on it. It says a line lowest point of scallop to line. So this would be the lowest point of the scallops here at the bottom, and then up here at the top. And so you want to align your pattern piece to that point. And you want to do that for each of the pieces. And the easiest way to mirror the lace, and you want the lace to be mirrored so that it's symmetrical on both sides, um, is to cut a single layer from each piece. And then to find the mirror matching piece, we're gonna flip it over to the opposite side. So I'm gonna cut each of these pieces from the single layer, and then I'll come back to cut the mirrored side. So I have cut each of the pieces from a single layer of the lace, and I've marked the notches. And now I want to cut the mirrored side. So I'm gonna flip this over so that this is the wrong side facing up. And I'm gonna try and match the same parts of the lace, the pattern. So I'm gonna look for this big flower. This big flower is right up here. And I'm gonna align the top edge of the scallops. Oop, not get my ring caught in the lace. Be careful if you're wearing jewelry. And just line it up carefully. And I also have the center front piece flip it over and here's the big flower. I'm going to find the big flower line up all the scallops and then I also have the front inset piece and that matches the bottom the big flower here. Make sure your flowers are pointing in the same direction. If I tried to put it up here see this flower goes this way these flowers go that way. That goes down here. Oh, see, that doesn't fit. It overlaps. I'm going to have to move it down here. Fortunately, this didn't turn out to be very economical use of my lace. I try to fit it as close together as I can, so you might have to play with it a little bit, see how it works out. And then you'll want to put your pattern piece on top so that you can really see where the edges are. And then you'll just cut around the second layer, and that's how you mirror lace. Okay, we're ready to begin sewing style A. I have all my pattern pieces cut out. I have my sewing machine set up and we're going to start. I have my machine set on a straight stitch. First thing we're gonna do is sew the center front seam of the lace overlay. Okay, a little bit backwards. If you have trouble with your machine uh, sucking down lace into the feed dogs, you can put a little strip of tissue paper underneath. So far my machine's okay. So a quarter inch seam. Okay, so we have that. I'm gonna cut my thread ends. I'm really good at leaving those out. And you want to press this open just a little bit with your fingers. And you'll want to trim it because you don't want these seam allowances sticking out. You want to use a pair of sharp scissors here very carefully because you don't want to cut through onto the other side of the lace. I've done that before, that's very disappointing. Okay, get rid of that. Now let's find our front piece. Put everything else back here. Okay. And on the right side, I have marked where the center front is. You can see my little pen mark right there. And I'm going to line that up with the seam. Okay, there we go. I'm going to get this all pinned down, and then I'll come right back. Okay, so I've got the lace overlay pinned to the front, and I have my... Oh, yes, I do. My machine's set for a zigzag at about two and a half width and two length. And all I'm gonna do is sew a very narrow zigzag along the scalloped edge of the lace, just on the inside. So it'll hold it down. Take my pen out. This is where a knee lift comes in really handy. So don't keep letting go. Stop 
up and readjust, readjust the knee to. And when you reach the front, you'll want to pivot and then come back down the other side. So I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so I've sewn the inset to the front. I think you can just barely see the uh, zigzag stitches. And the next step that we're going to do, we're going to be on step two now. We're going to sew the inset to the front. So you're going to match your notches. Here's one notch on the lace. We're going to match notches here. And put a couple pins in. When you match it, you want to match at the seam line. So a quarter of an inch in. You don't want to match at the very edge because that won't always match. Oh look, a piece of lace that got stuck. And when you get down to the bottom, after it's sewn and turned back, the lace is going to end a quarter of an inch from the edge here. And you want that to happen because if this quarter inch here, you're going to be sewing the gusset. Okay? So you're going to go and use oops, wrong one here, a stretch stitch. I'm using a lightning stitch. You could also use a very narrow zigzag or um, a serger if you have a serger. Now, my machine, I don't know about yours, but on my machine, it does the lightning stitch all the way over to the left. So I have to consider where my quarter inch seam allowance is going to be. You don't want to use a straight stitch here because there's a lot of stretch across this seam and it could pop all the stitches and that would make you unhappy, I'm sure. Make me unhappy. So as you can see, the inset ends before the end of the front. And then when you turn it back, we got about a quarter of an inch here, and that's going to be for sewing our gusset. So you're going to want to repeat with the other side. Okay, so I've sewn the front insets to the front, and you'll want to press the seam allowances towards the front piece. So they both go in. And that's going to be important later on when we sew the gusset piece to the front and the back. So I'm going to put the front aside for now and we're going to sew the back insets on the same way that we did the front. So I have my notch here, my notch over there. We're going to line these up. Okay, match the notches. Oop, got two pins here. Put a few pins in to kind of reach around my camera here. Oops, no bent pins. Okay, and once again, after this is sewn and you turn the seam allowances back, the lace is going to end a quarter of an inch from the bottom of the front where the gusset seam will be. Still using the lightning stitch. Oops.
Okay. Oop, my little end got away from me there. See, there's a quarter of an inch there from the end. And you want to repeat for the other side and then press the seam allowances towards the back. Okay, so I finished sewing the front and back lace insets and I have pressed the seam allowances towards the front and the back. And we're going to put these pieces aside for now and we're going to work on the gusset. So I've already put the two gussets right sides together. This is the self this is the lining. And you're just going to sew down the sides, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you can just use a regular straight stitch here. This part of the body doesn't require a lot of stretch. You could continue to use uh, your lightning stitch or very narrow zigzag, whatever you just used on the previous step, if you like. And I will come back once I've sewn these two seams. Okay, so I have sewn the two side seams here and I'm going to grade the seam allowance. So I'm gonna take my scissors here and I'm just gonna cut Actually, I should cut the lining side, shouldn't I? I'm just gonna cut the lining side about halfway, which would be an eighth of an inch. You just wanna reduce the bulk here. Oops. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. Hands shake a lot, it's kinda of hard to grab sometimes. Okay. Just do the best that you can. Oops. So do that for both sides and turn it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, so I've turned my gusset right side out. You're gonna have little dog ears sticking up here. You can just trim those away. That'll reduce some of the bulk later on. And the next step we're gonna do is step five. We're going to attach the gusset to the front and back pieces. Let me get away these little bits. Okay, so I'm taking the front here. And as you can see, you have the notches here on the gusset. And you wanna line those up with your notches on the front. Pin. Actually, I think I'm gonna sew from the gusset side. It'd be a little easier to see. So the important thing here is that we earlier pressed back the seam allowances on the front. You wanna keep it pressed back here. And then when we join it to the gusset, you want that to line up at the seam line so that no, none of the raw edges are gonna be showing, okay? So you have that pressed back here. And then when you get down to the other end, you'll want to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm still using a straight stitch here. I'm going to sew my quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to do my best to match this point here where the front and the gusset meet. sure that the other side is turned back. Try and make that seam neat. Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, we did pretty good. Okay, see, so there's nothing sticking out on the sides. Oh, I guess I could press that a little better. If you're worried about the lining sticking out, you could cut your lining also from the self fabric. Okay. okay, and you're gonna repeat the same side for the, or the same step for the back. 
Okay, so the gusset is attached to the front and the back now. And if you want to, you could finish the seam allowances here. You could put some zigzag stitching, you could serge them with a serger or grade the seam allowances. And if you want to keep this point nice and flat here, you could add a little bit of a bar tack on uh, both sides at the front and the back join so that the seam allowances are pressed towards the front and the back away from the gusset. Or you could stitch along here with like a zigzag, something like that. I'm not going to do anything with that for now. I'm going to continue on to step five, which is sewing the side seams. So I'm going to put right sides together to kind of reach around the camera here. And, oops, you want to match your notches along the inset. here. And you want to make sure that on both sides the seam allowances for the insets are pressed up. And this is kind of a matching point right here. You'll probably be able to feel it if it gets lined up correctly or not. So we're going to go ahead and sew. And you can use a straight stitch here. Uh, this is a vertical seam so it's not going to stretch across the body. That's when we really need to have those stretched stitches. But if you're worried about it popping, you could use a lightning stitch here, uh, a narrow zigzag, oops, or even the surgery. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera stand. one side seam. Now go ahead and do the other side. Okay, we're going to move on to step seven now, sewing on the waist elastic. I've gone ahead and changed my threads to match my elastic. I'm using this ivory elastic for this sample. And I've cut it to the length indicated on the elastic lengths chart. So I folded it in half, right sides together, except I don't think this elastic really has a right side. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam with a straight stitch. Oops. Kind of hard to get it under the presser foot without it shifting. Okay, go back a little bit here. Oops. So it's going to stop. Okay. Oops. threads here. Okay, now I'm just going to finger press it open. And we're going to sew a bar tack over this seam to help the seam allowances lay really flat. Let's see. I have my machine set on a zigzag. I have it at a 4 width and a 1.4 length. I find if I don't put enough of a stitch length, it just doesn't move. There's not enough for the feed dogs to hold on to. Let's see if this works. Oh, that works. Okay. Okay, so, oop. Did move a little bit. I'm gonna cut my threads and trim away the extra seam allowance. Oh, it's going on the floor. Okay. And now I'm going to fold the elastic into quarters, and then I'm going to fold uh, the panty waist into quarters and mark them with pins. And then I'll come back and show you how to sew the waist elastic. Okay, so I have the elastic marked into quarters with pins, and I have the waistband marked into quarters with pins. And now I'm going to get everything lined up. See, you might be wondering how well I matched my side seams with the inset. And the answer is not very well because I am not good at talking and sewing at the same time. I'm hoping yours matched better than mine did. 
So I like to put the elastic join along one of the side seams. And I'm gonna line up the edge of the elastic with the edge of the fabric. And since this elastic has kind of a see-through part down the middle, at the end I'm gonna to have to um, trim away some of the extra fabric that's there. Oh, I'm gonna take out the arm here on my sewing machine, make it a little easier for myself. And I still have my machine on a zigzag. Oh no, I don't have it on a zigzag. There we go. It is on a zigzag, that was a lie. Okay, I have it about at a three and a half width. Oh, and let's do about two and a half long. You'll want to check the width and length on your zigzag, on your sewing machine. Uh, make a little test sample and then stretch it. Make sure that the stitches don't pop. And you also want to make sure that the stitches aren't so dense that the, um, the fabric gets distorted and ripples. Hard part's getting everything situated under the needle here. Oops. I'm actually going to start right behind, or I guess in front of, in front of where all that is. So I'm not going over a bulky seam right at the very beginning. Okay, so the edge of the fabric lined up with the edge of the elastic, and I'm only going to sew over this inner portion of the, um, let me turn this maybe so you can see a little bit better. Sorry, I didn't know you couldn't see. I'm only going to sew over this inner portion of the elastic. Okay. Now that I've gotten going, I just want to stretch the elastic a little bit to meet these quarter marking pins here. I don't know if you can see those yet. You don't want to stretch the fabric. So I kind of have a lot to keep track of right here. Make sure the edges are lined up, that you're only stretching the elastic and that the stitches are staying on the elastic and not onto the fabric. Stop and readjust as you need to. Okay, take out your pins as necessary and go all the way around and I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so I have trimmed away the excess fabric from along the waistline, and that's it. This is your finished Dahlia Hipster in Style A.